I hope everybody's doing fine. I know it's that time of day, you know, when you win the time when you need the, your coffee the most and your handphones the most, right? We turn to it every time we do. We need entertainment. And I guess that's just the way it is nowadays, right? Gone are the days when you watch TV for movies or you're waiting for Doraemon to show up. That's what I, what I did, right? Now you can just go on your, on your mobiles and they're all there. So but what, so what is the difference, right? When you're watching TV, you can do it while maybe washing the dishes, talking to your friends, or maybe doing a self-facial. But when you're on your mobile and you're watching something, boom, that's it. You're captive. You're not going anywhere. Your attention is right there. So how do we bank on that? So ladies and gentlemen, the next session is a panel discussion. So please... Give your warm welcome for the General Manager of Digital Advertising, PT Telkomsel, Mr. Ade Parulian. And of course, also, please give your big, biggest hand for Chief Executive Officer, Cascus Networks, Mr. Eddie Taslim. And also give your a round of applause for the Chairman of PTGAI DKI Jaya, Mr. Charlie Aziz. And also the co-founder of Kapan Lagi Network, Mr. Steve Christian. And ladies and gentlemen, as your moderator, Chief Marketing Officer of All Stars, give it up for Miss Desi Bakir. Thank you. Usually the moderator doesn't sit in the middle, so can you please ini, geser, geser, geser. Selamat sore semuanya. Good afternoon everyone. I'm expecting a little bit, you know, more applause. Good afternoon everyone. And more applause for the gentleman over here. More applause, more applause. I do not take any less than a glorious applause for this session because we are going to talk about videos. How interesting. Because that's what we've been talking about probably for the past half of the day. But this one is going to be the most interesting. And I think MMA paired me here with this gentleman with a lot more experience than me. Maksudnya lebih tua. Ya, empat-empatnya. Sengaja, aku sengaja ngomong kayak ini. Harus branding, Pak. Branding muda. Gitu ya. So, uh, please give another warm welcome for Pak Edi, Pak Ade, Pak Steve, and also Pak Charlie. I do not expect less than glorious applause, right? Applause, applause. So we've been hearing a lot about videos today. If you count, today probably the word video has been on stage for, I don't know, 1,000, 2,000 times. But is it real? Is it happening? Is the trend happening? Or is it just a sales pitch from all of people that just presented here? So, Pak Ade, maybe I would like to get your view from you know, one of the largest uh, telco provider here in Indonesia. Is video trend happening? Okay. Well. Let me start with this, this personal experience. I guess we all still remember how five or six years ago when we want to watch our favorite movie, there's only one medium that can do that, which is TV, right? But now, thank you with the rapid internet penetration as well as 4G broadband that is available almost in every part of Indonesia. Now people can actually watch their favorite content on, on mobile. Not to mention that watching video on mobile, OTT, VOD, people can actually you know, have the freedom to choose what content they wanna watch, when they wanna watch it, or where they wanna watch it. Or right. even they can download it to watch it later on when they, are, you know, when they have a free time. Yes. Right. So having said that, I would like to show some data here on the date, uh, video consumption. See, this is the trend of uh, video consumption for the last two months. Let's take an example of uh, October last year. The data consumption for video is only reaching 27 petabyte. petabyte. Last year. Last year. 27 October. petabyte. Petabyte. Compared to you know, September this year, it's already reaching to 67 petabytes. 67 petabytes. Petabyte. I don't even know how much that is. Well, I'll, I'll, ex uh, I'll explain that later on on the next slide. Right. So there's a big growth, 
between October last year to September this year, right? And actually, yeah, this 65, this 65 uh, petabyte is the big uh, one of the biggest uh, category in Telkomsel data consumption. Okay. The share is 33 percent. So video for Telkomsel is already 33 percent of, of the, the total, total data, data consumption. consumption. Yes. So that is how big the data consumption for video itself. In the of the you know the grow the grow for the average data data usage for per, per per user, we can see that 56 is the growth uh, rate, while the total of one gigabyte is the total of data that average user consume monthly. Yeah, per monthly. video, right? Right. To answer this question, what is 70 or 67 petabyte? Here's the, the easiest way to explain it. 73 petabyte, that is the record of the highest data consumption for the last 12 months. Uh, yeah. 73 petabyte, that is equal with 8,618 year of full HD video. Full HD. Full HD. Mm -mm. Jadi kalau yang lores-lores gitu nggak kehitung ya? Well, it's Just probably HD. double. Okay. Kalau yang lores-lores itu. Karena asum asumsinya, kita bikin sedikit research, one hour of HD video it will consume of it will consuming of uh, one gigabyte of one your gigabyte. data. One gigabyte. Okay. So 73 petabyte is equal with 8,000 plus year. So right. that is the size of our video consumption nowadays. Okay. And then in terms of the user. in terms of the user, we have 62.4 million user. Mm -hmm. That is equal with the total. Uh, the whole total population of Italy. Of Italy. Yes. Right, that and that's unique again, users. Yes, that is the size of the user that we have at Telkomsel. Right. That and consuming video. And that's equal with 60% of total smartphone user. Okay. Right? So it's a big... It's Jadi a big, banyak ya, so it's true. It's so, humongous probably. Yeah, we discussed earlier backstage, the video trend is not... It's not happening, it's already happened. It's already happened since even a year ago. Yeah. Okay, and like, what is the, so this is the user, and what else can you share about the video trend here in Indonesia, based from telco point of view? Well, some, some, some of my clients ask, Adi, okay, video is big, but is it only happening in, 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 uh, in big, rural? In Jakarta. Big, in Jakarta or big cities. Mm -hmm. That is not the case. The case is that, this is the heat map. So as you can see, Everybody, almost in every part of Indonesia, are consuming video on their mobile nowadays. Okay. Which, of course, obviously, Jakarta has the highest consumption for video data, followed by Jawa Barat. Right, but if right. you see also in the Sumatra area, it's also quite huge, right? Yep, probably mm -hmm. they have bad reception for TV. I, don't I know. see. Okay, so that. And are they only watching free videos? Is it, is it because of free? I mean, like there are lots of UGC, you know, the free well, videos. Well, people watch uh, video both on UGC and subscription based. I do have data here that's showing uh, how willing people to, you know, to pay the subscription for video, mm. right? In terms of daily active user, free versus uh, subscription based, of course, free they have bigger uh, user base. Of Maybe course, 25, namanya juga gratis, ya yeah, kan? Gratisan, uh -huh. namanya juga gratisan. Uh -huh. So, 25 juta versus 1 million, right? But let's not stop there. If we go further to the monthly average volume, sepertinya orang yang mengkonsumsi subscription-based video, they are willing to spend more on the data. Right. 8.9 gigabyte, that is the average, versus 1.2 gigabyte on the free content. On the free content. Because is it fair to assume that because the content in the subscription base is a more of a long form? Exactly. I will suspect it that way. Okay. Karena di subscription base biasanya kita bicara long form, setengah jam, satu jam. Okay, so the myth that in video you have to be short, it, it's, it's really not quantifiable yet. 
Yes. Okay. Yes. So we see that from the data consumption that video is really, really on the rise, and we see also that people are willing to pay for long form content. But if on the so from the free side, say the publisher side, but Steve, I would like to get your view in KLY uh, sites or platforms. Do you also see this trend? So video is overtaking photos or text, for example. Yes. Yes, we are seeing that. So if you are looking at our sites, yeah, we have a lot of vertical sites from Liputan Nam, Merdeka, Kapan Laki, and a lot of that, right? And in the group, we currently have a video platform, yeah, free content, YouTube, TikTok, video, one of yeah. them in the mm -hmm. screen. Ada, yeah. untung ada, yeah. mm -hmm. And then if we are, <laughs> <laughs> if we are combining all users or all, all of our users, in the normal times, it's probably about 30% of our users are coming for video. So 30% of the KLY... KLY and video are... Pe people are 30% are coming to our sites, yeah? Okay. Because they want to see videos. Because they want to see videos. See videos yeah. So, yeah, like for Telkomsel, it's 33% of all the data usage for you. is also, But so it's quite huge, right? One yeah, third yeah. is not small. Uh, one, one third is not small. And if you are looking at a special event, like in, in Asian Games, because we were the official partners, it goes to up until almost 50 percent almost 50 percent of all the users are coming for videos and that's a, a quite impressive numbers yeah within probably in the last three years we don't see much on video but now we are seeing the video is coming very big okay yeah. and i think that's why uh, video is also on the rise and a lot are starting to create their own video platform so for instance like uh, eddie cascos has always been known as you know a community Base platform, but now you have Cascos TV. You're moving into video as well. And is this because of the trend or because of the gut? Or why was it that you started uh, Cascos TV? Well, Cascos has always been a place for where our communities uh, creating the content, discuss, interact, and showcasing their hobbies and everything. And, and what we see is that more and more videos, uh, more and more users upload their videos. And also, some of our community are very vibrant in social media, in Facebook, in YouTube uploading their videos, uploading their content creation, their web series and everything. So at Cascos, our strategy is basically create our own video platforms where we can curate all the UGC videos and having a program approach and also add that with our original content. Because uh, for Cascos, the DNA is always about hobbies and interests. So we want to focus on that. And video is always, uh, is always big. And Cascos, we just launched uh, last month, uh, three weeks ago actually. So we hope to see the, the growth as Telkomsel and Video.com does. Okay, and in this trend of video, I think almost now every brand, at least the ones here I know are going into videos, right? Who here hasn't done any video campaign in the last 12 months? Gak ada kan? Aku sengaja nanya pertanyaan yang gak ada jawabannya. Karena pasti pada malas mau nanya ke tangan ya kan? So no, nobody here has not done any video campaigns for the past 12 months. So in terms, because the consumers are there and they want to do it. Now, Pak Charlie, as uh, the chairman of uh, Indonesia Advertising Board, uh, you, you had a lot of the advertising agencies. I also want to get your view on this. So we, when we say video, there's always, you know, soft sell. Soft sell is the best. Soft sell is the new hard sell. But how do you see it? Aku dengar ketawa-ketawa nih kayaknya sebelah, sebelah, sebelah sini. So, is hard sell dead when it comes to video or it's, what? It's, it's basically depends on the brand needs actually. Because of, uh, if everything goes on the immersive uh, uh, communication. Immersive itu maksudnya soft sell gitu yeah, ya. Uh, mm -hmm. soft, uh, soft sell is it's too soft and it's not exposing the brand correctly. But uh, sometimes, like uh, two types of approach, there's uh, immersive and intrusive. Yes. Up to now, we are still need an intrusive communications. Uh, based on like uh, we, apa ya? We also, gini, random stuff. We are always browsing for the random stuff, right? right? And sometimes we need it to refresh our thinking, our mind, and our needs, and even updating our uh, social life. That's the role of intrusive ads. I think that's a. Uh, that's a short explanation of why we need the immersive and intrusive ads. So, in terms of video, I, I think I see in the previous presentation as well, the performance of 
video ads in mobile games is also very good. And I yeah. think the ads in video games are all very intrusive, right? Yeah. So that actually proves the point that even in video, you still have to balance between immersive and also intrusive. Intrusive, yeah. Okay. In, in the publisher side, well, how do you see immersive or intrusive side? So uh, in I'm, let's see, I'm, I'm talking with uh, agencies and, and brands and all the spenders, advertising. Yeah? If you are looking at what money, what kind of... Uh, there, uh, what kind of, uh, what kind of, uh, in there is a uh, two types of spending in in video advertising. The first one mm. is buying banners or mm. buying uh, what is a pre-roll, something mm. like that. Yeah. yeah, and that money is probably about eighty percent now. Eighty percent is now spent the, uh, more on, on that on, type, and on that type, on a pre-roll. Yeah, and the rest is twenty percent on on the content itself, as mm. a branded content. So I can say that the 80% are mostly, if you are seeing all the pre-roll advertisements, what is it? There is no self, soft sell in that. There is Everything no soft selling, yes. Yeah? I will agree on that. So I can say that based on that, the numbers of uh, the money that's spent is currently on, on the hard sell. Okay. You can say that. For, for the publishers, I, I must ask, I mean, you have your own video platform, right? But of course, there are other video platforms out there. Do you only invest in your video platform? And I think this goes for the brands as well, right? When you have your own asset, do you invest only on your own asset? Or do you invest also on other assets out there? So home versus homeless strategy or not, whatever you might call it. Not just in video, right? I mean, in, in every format, whether it's text or images, we always have the strategy of social media strategy, uh, our Facebook strategy our YouTube strategy for video, and in terms of Cascos and video.com, we have our own home strategy, which is our own management, our own video platforms, right? And it's a balance of strategy, which content we push to where, that's what matters. I think at the end of the day, from a publisher's perspective, from media perspective, I think we want to have control in terms of the monetization part. We okay. want to have the ability to sell pre-roll, linear ads, non-linear ads, and that only allow that only uh, applicable if we have our own video platforms. But Facebook, YouTube, of course, we have to distribute there because I think that's where the most uh, consumption is happening. But again, uh, we have to pick the strategy which content we distribute, which content we keep it exclusively in our own. Okay. Do you also share the same view, Pastif? So, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, agree. I agree with that. Again, I mean to to, to add to the question. Previously, right? Soft sell, hard sell from, let's say, from video.com perspective, from Casco's perspective. Any sell is good as long as it is sold. Any right? sell is good as long as it's sold. I just, let's so cheers to that. I agree. So, do you also carry the same strategy, home versus homeless, gitu, Pak? Yeah, it's the same thing. Oh, it's the same well, thing. For telecom sale, if I may ask, I mean, if I may add, yeah, of course, home is our, our first choice. Good thing is that kita punya pipeline-nya, kita punya jaringannya. So homeless is actually never been an option for us. So okay. we go direct to home, where, seperti Pak Eddie bilang, when we have our own home, we can create whatever we want, whether it's vertical, whether it's you know uh, pre-roll 15 second, whether it's uh, non-skippable, skippable, mid-roll, pre-roll, you know. Terserah. terserah. Namanya juga rumah sendiri rumah, ya. Rumah sendiri. Ya, kalau Pak Charlie sebagai yang homeless ya, because you're not a publisher atau apa gitu. How do you see this whole home versus homeless one when it comes to brands or uh, representing the agencies under P3I gitu? Gimana sih? How do you strategize between this the asset the strategy between home and homeless? Okay. Uh, is there any of you guys comes from the agency background? Raise your hands. Suddenly, like one, two, three, or less than ten. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Susah ngajak angkat tangan, gue heran. Ha -ha. Kalau disco aja, angkat tangan semua. Okay. So, okay uh, basically, that uh, the agencies have to remain focused of their core strategy because of uh, we cannot compete with all of these big boys that uh, they pack and bundle with the fuse and engagement. Whereas the but the the strength of the become the agencies is we are non affiliated to only one platform, so we have a liberty to choose our best fit for our brands. The first and secondly is uh, advertising agency remains as a creative powerhouse of the business. So uh, I think that's one of strategy that uh, we can define for the features. The video, uh, I think the video ecosystem has uh, evolved so much. Now everybody is publisher, everybody is content producer, right? Even Telkomsel, now is also 
going into content. But of course, there are challenges, right? In this video ecosystem where everything is blurred. How, what are the main challenges that you guys face? And maybe that can voice out, you know, some of the concerns of the friends yang malas tunjuk tangan di sini. Yeah. Mm -mm. I think the biggest, the biggest challenge in this industry is the supply and demand. Supply and demand. demand. Yeah, the supply is, there are a lot of video Overflowing, impressions. Overflowing, yeah. Yeah, billions of billions of video impressions. And if you are seeing from the advertiser side, yeah, they are not, still not maximized in spending money on video. That's why it's creating, the, the price is going down now. Because of what? Because of the supply is unlimited. Right. It used to be the creators of videos are only creators. In the, in the age of YouTube, probably all the creators are, I can say professional or semi-professional. Yeah. Right? Because you, you need to have like some kind of equipment to do something mm. on YouTube. But now with the rise of Instagrams with stories and stuff like that, right? The personal videos is becoming a major video supplies. Right? Okay, so the supply is overflowing and that causes the, the problem the with The advertisers are spending enough money on the... Not spending enough money. Itself. And I think as an advertiser, probably, it's also create a new challenge where when you let out a new video campaign, then you're also challenged because of the unlimited number of supply. And how do you beat and cut the... Uh, the how do you cut through all the mess gitu, and all the supply? How do you do it? Totally agree with Steve, but supply is is the is the is the foundation of the of the challenges. But I think another another part is the quality as well because the the current monetization advertising is based on metrics, right? Views, watch times, yeah. and engagement completion, completion rate. rate. Mm -hmm. Those are all quantities based, right? We don't have measurements about quality. So when Steve talk about supply, obviously you have videos from low quality up until very yeah. premium Are videos only, and everybody yeah. competing in the same measurement yeah. so it's somewhat it's not fair for for a premium videos for premium programs but but i think that's that's what happened now in indonesia so i think uh, the supply is is the problem and all, i think the monetization also facing its challenges in terms of the measurement itself because uh, again views if you compete with views i don't think anybody wants to compete with youtube right yeah so we have to find where do we fit in the landscape, in the video landscape? As a publisher, as a media, we, we cannot compete in terms of view, so we have to be creative in terms of, let's say, ads inventory, uh, rich media or interactive or rewarding ads in the previous session, yeah. or maybe superimpose, overlay, all those kind of creativity, because we have to do that, because if not, we don't, we, we, there's no way to compete in terms of views alone, right? Yeah, and I think that also represents the challenges for brands, right? Aside from branded content, how else are they going to enter the massive amount of video already available in terms of inventory? Because otherwise, then you would go into the wrong inventory and probably we talked about brand safety earlier before today also and that would be also be a challenge. I think before I hear the magical chime in, uh, can I get your... Yeah, bentar lagi, bentar lagi dia muncul, Peter Pan-nya turun. Bef uh, before uh, the magical chimes come in, can I get, you know, 30 seconds from each of you, what would be the top tip for the, our friends here, if they want to enter the video landscape better, because I think everyone is already entering the video landscape anyway, to, to do it better, what would be your top tip for that? Dari sebelah sana deh, kan udah ngomong. Susah dong, kan aku tinggal nanya, jadi ini, susah. Okay, yeah, it's very simple that uh, the laws of supply and demand is the economic laws, whereas the only first is quality leadership and the other is supply leadership. So if you talk about creativity, you have to stand into uh, quality leadership. So that's it. I mean, uh, so create a good, yeah, good quality content. Good quality content yeah. is the first. Good quality video. video. Okay, yeah. what about you, Pasti? When you are spending on video, there are yeah. one decision that you should make before you spend the money. Yeah, you spend on the platforms or you spend on the content. Okay. When you're talking about spending on the platforms, you are basically you are spending on the hard sell. Mm. Right? Depend on your brand. You want you want to do what, right? And then if you are spending on content, you will expect something different. Mm. You do not want to show up the pre-roll things like that. You want to be very subtle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's content business. So I think so, you decide between the content or, or the platform and you yeah. adjust also your strategy or your measurement based on that too. Yeah. Yeah. Jadi jangan invest apa ngarepnya dapat apa gitu ya, Pak. Heeh, <laughs> uh -uh, dengar tuh. Yeah. And then what about you, Pak Ade? Well, uh, video is here. Love it or hate it, video will be here. Right? But then again, let's not forget video is a medium. 
it will be better if you can fill your video with the data. Well, I'm a big fan of data. Okay, bye. Right? So <laughs> video, video that is served to people that is looking to, for specific product, and the video is talking about the same product, well, that is the key of, you know. Your okay, so rate. basically you create not just based on gut, not based on creativity, but also based on data. data exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. What about you, Pak? As, Susah in, terakhir, as ya. in any businesses, I mean, you have to find your own uniqueness, right? I mean, yeah. on the top landscape, on the long form, you have the Netflix, the Amazon Prime, the iFlix, Hulk, View, and etc. And then short form, obviously, YouTube, TikTok, Video.com, and Cascus just entered the market as well. But from the brand perspective, I think content, uh, like Charlie said, is the most important thing. What storyteller you, what storytelling you want to, you want you want you want to deliver? And I think to adjust which medium. I think in Facebook, in IGTV, it's different format. It's it's vertical. Uh, in, in social media, it's square. So you have to adjust the content with the medium as well. You cannot push the same video that you that you advertise in, in television and then distribute it in social media. I don't think it's always work. So. Okay, so a conclusion is the content, the spending strategy, the data behind it, and also the medium you use for every format. So thank you very much, gentlemen, and thank you everyone. Please a big round of applause for Pak Charlie, Pak Steve, Pak Ade, and Pak Edi here. I'm Desi Bahir signing off and next to the MC. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Bahir, and of course all of our speakers. We have a token of appreciation. Ke yang paling cantik dulu kali ya. Ini aku dapat juga gak sih? Oh dapat baik. Dapat dong. Yang satu-satunya yang cantik soalnya. So here it is for Miss Bahir. Thank you very much for your time. High five, don't leave me hanging. <laughs> Mr. Taslim, of course. Thank you very much for all your time and efforts. Thank you very much. Of course, Mr. Parulian. Here you go. Terima kasih. And of course, we got for Mr. Christian as well. Thank you very much on behalf of MMA once again. Last but not least, Mr. Aziz. Once again, all of our gratitude for your time and efforts. And we'd like to have a photo op for, with everyone, with all of our speakers. Once again, all of your speakers for MMA Indonesia 2018. Can we have another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you very much.